this is a very interesting series where I'm trying to take some examples related to inverse of function. Quadratic function is very fascinating. I found students making a lot of mistakes while finding its inverse. So we'll highlight some of these mistakes also during the solution of the problem. So the question here is, consider the function f of x equals to x over 3 whole square. Find the inverse of the function. Explain why the inverse is not a function. Suppose f of x represents the height of a rocket taking off in terms of time. How would you need to restrict the domain or range of function? Very interesting question. Try to answer it. And then watch my video. Here is my solution. To find inverse of any function, what do we do? First step is swap x and y. So the function given to us is in this form y equals to x over 3 whole square. So step number 1 is swap x and y. So we'll write this function as x equals to y over 3 whole square. And now we will isolate y. Well, some students or sometimes there is alternate method also, which I should tell you right in the very beginning. To find inverse, we are basically trying to find what x is in terms of y. So you can go straight, find x in terms of y, and then get your answer. Right? But method taught here for most students is what I'm being what I'm following now. So we'll follow this method in our videos. So we have x equals to y over 3 whole square. Now we need to isolate y so we need to square root both sides so when we do square root of x we get rid of this square from the right side y over 3 and that is what we normally do and that is a mistake so this is the major mistake which is committed by the students and that is the reason why i have taken up this question do you know what is a mistake here i think some of you know if not remember square Whenever you do square root, you have to write plus and minus, both. Do you understand? When we say x is equals to something square, let us say that something is minus 5. Minus 5 is also 25, right? And 5 square is also 25. So if I go backwards, right, then I should know that the value actually could be both plus and minus. So whenever you square root, you should do plus and minus. I'll, you should watch my video on square root of a square to understand this in details. That's another interesting video. Now here, so my, I want to just highlight this portion. The second portion is that when you want to isolate y, now you need to what, multiply by 3 both sides. Now I've seen students writing 3 here. So they, when they multiply, they write 3 and then plus minus and square root x equals to y. And uh, they get stuck here and I've seen test papers with uh, just 3 written here and then they don't know what is to be done. So when you multiply really, you're multiplying 3 with square root thing, right? And it has a sign plus and minus, that's okay. So it is actually plus and minus 3 times square root of x. That is y. So now you get inverse of your function which is written as f inverse and which you write here as plus minus 3 square root x. Now here we can commit third mistake. What is the third mistake? You could write f inverse and x in the bracket. But some teachers forgive you for that. But you know this is not a function. We are saying inverse of our function. We are not saying inverse function. These are two different things. Writing x will make it wrong since it is not a function. For most of the values of x except 0, we have two values of this. So it is just a relation, not a function. Do you understand? So well, so don't write x here. So we pointed out to you three mistakes which could be committed. One, writing plus and minus. Third, writing 3 plus minus square root x. Fourth, writing this as a function, f inverse of x, right? So take care of these three points whenever you do this question. For 90 plus student, they can lose marks anywhere for any small mistake. So we get the inverse of the function. And let me write down the answer here that inverse of the given function is 
plus minus 3 square root x. Okay? Now part b is explain why the inverse is not a function. Now except for 0, if I write 0, the value is 0. But for any other value of x, of course, what will be the value of inverse? So, if I write x, now here the domain is, we'll talk about it soon, has to be greater than or equal to 0. So, any other value, you get plus minus 3 times the square root of x. So, you got two values. Is that so? Yes. So, it fails the vertical line test. Therefore, it is not a function. So, because of this, this is one way you can explain it. The other way you can explain it is like this. You can sketch your function itself. Let me do that part also on the side. Now what I'm trying to say is you can sketch x square or let me do it here x square. So this function will be kind of like this. Let's see this, right? So x over 3 whole square will be a function like this. And here, as you can see, if I draw, draw a horizontal line, it fails horizontal line test. It cuts at two places. Therefore, its inverse is not a function. When you're trying to find inverse, basically you're trying to flip your graph on the line y equals to x. When you flip it, this becomes vertical. Do you see that? It becomes a vertical line and therefore it fails vertical line test because vertical line will cross the graph at two points. So that is another way of explaining. So I've told you two methods. One, graphical representation and second algebraic method. Right here you got two values plus and minus, right? So we have plus and minus in the equation and second is horizontal line test. You should know both. Part C is suppose f of x represents the height of the rocket taking off in terms of time how would you need to restrict the domain or range of the function. Now, if it is taking off, we'll say x is the time. So here we'll say x is time in seconds or whatever. So we say time in seconds, right? That is along the x-axis. Now, in this case, the restriction is that it is greater than or equal to zero, right? So we have a restriction that t is greater than or equal to zero. So that is the restriction which happens here, right? And now at times it could be the second part to this is which I'm saying part D. For you, you need to find inverse of restricted function and explain why that inverse is a function and explain why that inverse is a function. So that is an exercise for you to do. I hope you appreciate what we have done here. We have highlighted common mistakes which can occur and I want you to avoid them. Second, we have tried to give some examples, rather reasons for inverse. There are two reasons right here. Both could be given by you. And third, sometimes the questions are modified and written as I did. So always look into these things critically and answer them as asked. Thanks and all the best.